Halloween is coming. Isn't this spooky? Very, very spooky. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to my weekly vlog for Monday, October the 5th, 2020, and it's vlog number 188, and it's day 208 of COVID isolation. So, you saw in the teaser at the beginning my pumpkins that I have made, and here's another closer look at them. This was the first one I made. It's all done in the machine, a hooping it's called. It's a combination of applique and uh, machine embroidery, and... Uh, there's a hole in the bottom of these that you can put a little tea light in, or in my case, I put these little LED lights that I bought last year, uh, just before Christmas, that uh, run off of batteries, change different colors. You can set it for different colors or to cycle through colors. And there's a little remote control for it too, which makes it really handy. And so I have one of those in this pumpkin. And I made a second pumpkin. This one's not a jack-o'-lantern. It's just a pumpkin. But uh, when there's a light underneath it, as you saw in the teaser, um, this particular uh, fabric, which is batik, uh, glows really quite nicely. And you see the designs that are on the batik. And of course, they have a little leaf on the top of each one. And this is supposed to be a stem that you hang down from the top of it. Walter asked me about that. He says, what is that thing that's hanging from the pumpkin? And I said, it's supposed to be a stem. <coughs> Excuse me, I sucked in air. Yeah, wrong hole. So anyways, these take a while to make uh, as anything that's done uh, on the embroidery machine, but it's well worth the time and the effort. And uh, so these sit on my end tables in my uh, family room upstairs, along with my haunted houses, which you've seen before. So it looks very um, Halloweenish up there now. Of course, I'm thinking ahead to Christmas. And as you know, I've been working on several different Christmas projects. And one that I did yesterday was this angel. It's a freestanding lace, they call it, um, angel. And uh, again, because the bottom is empty you could put a little light underneath it and make it look really nice um what i'm thinking of doing is making this into a set of three which i might give as a gift at christmas time to my hairdresser or to somebody else i don't know again these do take a while to make um but you know again i think they look really quite nice now this one i did in a silver thread although it looks a little bit more gray than silver so i think the next one I'm going to do them in all different kinds of colors like shades of blue and uh, maybe some goldy yellow and that kind of thing and uh, this piece in the front and in the wings that's a piece of fabric uh, as well put it up a little closer so you can see it so I had this piece of fabric that's sort of ornate and uh, that goes in those pieces and so I can alter the alter those as well now I have another design for a little larger angel that is a little bit more involved when you make it um, it does involve some actual machine sewing, not just embroidery, where this is all done in embroidery and you put it together with little buttonets, they call them, that go through eyelets to hold them. You can see them here on the back, these little bumps. And I put a little bit of fabric glue on those just to hold them secure uh, when I have the whole thing assembled. And uh, the one that's a little bigger than this um, is a really nice angel because it's got some organza on it as well. Uh, so it's very delicate looking, um, but it does take a little bit more effort. And yeah, well, I'll probably make one of those too. Uh, Walter said he liked the bigger one better than these. So I like these. I think they're really nice. Okay, so that's what I've been up to and uh, lots more projects to work on. And I'll keep you abreast of those as I get things done. So that takes us to... Uh, it's not a new YouTube channel. Most people that are in the crafting community, especially in mixed media art journaling, know Mike Deacon. I have reviewed his site uh, before, um, probably a couple of years ago now. Um, I go to it all the time. I watch all of his uh, stuff uh, faithfully. And I especially enjoy his weekly vlogs as well. But lately he's been doing something on Tuesdays called Steampunk Tuesdays with his partner Ian. 
and uh, they're both into steampunk but Ian makes actual little machines and things like that that are all part of the steampunk genre and lately he's been designing journals and digital download uh, supplies for making your own steampunkish um, or Victorian style journals and his journals are quite lovely and I have downloaded and used some of his uh, digital downloads uh, his his printables I guess you might call them uh, for projects of my own as well but I thought I'd share this sort of it's almost like a sub channel to Mike Deacon's main channel um, so you can get a taste of Steampunk Tuesdays. This week's YouTube channel is not really a new channel because I have reviewed Mike Deacon's YouTube channel many times before and I'm sure many of you that are crafters have seen Mike Deacon's channel but what you might not be aware of is that he has sort of a feature uh, that he has once every week it's on Tuesdays and it's called Steampunk Tuesday and this features his partner Ian who makes wonderful steampunk gadgets and machines and things like that but this is something new he has started making journals uh, I find these really interesting the journals are gorgeous and all of the elements in his journals he puts together as digital downloads which can be bought uh, very cheaply from Mike Deacon's uh, website Mike Deacon Art so if you are interested in doing a journal or just seeing the whole concept of steampunk check out Steampunk Tuesdays on Mike Deacon's YouTube channel. So the link for Mike Deacon is uh, below and that's where you'll find Steampunk Tuesdays by Ian. I've also put in the link to the latest Stephen and Walter Live. Yes, we were very heavy handed yesterday on the COVID situation and I make no apologies for that. Um, it is the topic. I know we'd like to avoid it, but we can't avoid it. And to not talk about it is to pretend it doesn't exist. And that's just stupid. So we do talk about it. Um, I am always looking for new things to start off conversation on Stephen and Walter Live that do not have to do with politics or with COVID. But these days it seems very difficult to do so. So if you have some reasonable suggestions that you'd like to make you can always send me an email or put a comment below and uh, we'll consider it um, so the link for that's below you will also find a link for another idiot quilter episode episode 83 where I talk in more detail about the um, freestanding embroidered Halloween pumpkins I actually show you how I make them um, I don't take you through the entire process minute by minute. Uh, I do it in sections. And I also show you some of the problems that I had when I made these. So, uh, the reason I do that, and it's also the reason I call it the idiot quilter, is because you always make mistakes. It doesn't matter how many years you've been doing something. It doesn't matter how much of an expert you are. There is always mistakes. But what I find with a lot of YouTube channels that show you how to do things is they edit out the mistakes and I think you can learn as much from the mistakes as you can from the perfection of a project so that's why I leave them in and there were a couple of problems that I had with these pumpkins that I show you and I show you how I solved those problems because as I said we can learn from our mistakes so that's in Idiot Quilter episode 83 um, there's also, we had an art journal group meeting this week. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment, but I do have the link to that as well. And you're also going to find a link for this week's craft and chat session. It is the first Wednesday of the month, uh, this coming Wednesday. And that's when we decided as a group that we would have these once a month. Everyone's invited. Um, so the link is there. It is a Zoom meeting, as you know. Um, and so if you don't want to have your camera on, you have the option to come on and just listen. Or, you know, you can participate as much as you want, or you can just sit back and watch. But I hope you will participate. And when I say participate, what I mean is share with us what you've been working on lately. And, you know, it doesn't matter how insignificant you might think the project is. There is no judgment. There is no such thing as an insignificant piece of art. We are all making art. 
in our craft. We all have our area that we like more than other areas and that's fine. And we're all using different techniques and products too. All of these things I would like you to share with us. Um, because you know, it may seem very obvious to you, uh, a technique you might be doing. You might think that's been going on for thousands of years. Everybody knows how to do it. And guess what? Not everybody does. Um, so share it. And your spin on it will be unique anyways. So even if somebody has used that technique before, you might give them into some insight into something they hadn't thought of that's connected to that technique. And if you want to be as bold as I can be and share some of your pitfalls, that's a learning experience too. No judgment. And we do not talk about COVID and we do not talk about politics. We just talk about our crafting. And that crafting can be anything from scrapbooking, card making, mixed media, album making, journal making, um, they say mixed media, quilting, sewing, anything, it all falls under the genre of crafting. So I hope you'll be able to join us. So that's at Wednesday at one o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Um, that's this Wednesday and the link to the Zoom meeting is in the show notes below. So you just click on that uh, a couple of minutes before one o'clock on Wednesday and you're in. It's set up as a waiting room so I will admit you. Um, so give it a few seconds once you connect because it'll take me a couple of seconds to realize you are there and I can admit you but I will. I will admit you so no problem. Okay so what's not coming up now? Okay this is where I usually do my what's pissing me off this week. Now I had a suggestion from a new subscriber and she thought that maybe I should talk about what I'm thankful for and maybe alternate it. One week what I'm pissed off with, one week what I'm thankful for. And yeah, I get where the suggestion is coming from. Right now, we're in a very depressed time. And so, you know, do we need to hear about somebody or do we need to listen to somebody bitching about what's wrong in the world or in their world? Mm, no, we don't. But on the other hand, I have watched YouTube channels that have all that heartwarming, um, and I am cynical about this, the heartwarming blah blah blah, we're all in this together, let's be happy, let's, here's the ways to get over your stress, how not to feel depressed, la 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 la, roses flying from the ceiling, yeah, moonbeams shooting out of my, yeah, okay, moonbeams don't shoot out of any part of my anatomy, okay, or sunbeams or whatever you want to call it, okay. Am I a negative person and a cynical person? Actually, I'm not. I'm not. Now, the reason I say that with some hesitation is because I know that I can come off sometimes sounding like I'm very negative about things. But when I started the section on what's pissing me off this week, I started it off actually for to be funny. Okay? And, you know, some of the things that I say when I'm that in the pissed off thing are exaggerated. I embellish certain situations with my imagination and um, I do try to make sort of light of it but I'm sure some people will qualify that as dark humor and yes I do have a streak of dark humor in me but what I don't have in me well no I do have it I'm actually a very positive person um, sometimes in my life I've been too positive um, one of the reasons why I don't gamble, <laughs> how do we get to gambling, you might say? Well, I would have a tendency to be a gambler. I really would. I don't buy lottery tickets. You've heard me say that before. Because, for me, that's a form of gambling. Now, it doesn't mean that I'm a f I, I think gambling is the devil's sword or something like that. No, no. My problem is I have an obsessive personality at times and what I mean by that is I get my my head into something and I don't let it go I suddenly get all excited I want to do this 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 and this and carry on and I'm doing it with a very positive attitude because I'm thinking about the outcome and how great the outcome is going to be and that's my pitfall because nine times out of ten the way that I have imagined that something is going to end up 
is not the way it ends up. And depending on how different it ends up and how badly it ends up, that will make me very sad, depressed, pissed off. Okay. So back to why I say I don't buy uh, lottery tickets because of that, because even though I know the odds are against me winning, like one, it's more, more chances of getting struck by lightning twice in a row than winning the lottery. Nevertheless, in the back of my mind, I see, I get my lottery ticket and I say, maybe this time. And then when I don't win, and even though my logical brain turns around and says, yeah, well, you had no chance of winning that. So, you know, what are you all upset about? My emotional mind goes, crap, why couldn't it have been me? And I get a little down about that. So I don't buy lottery tickets simply because of that. So how does this lead up to what I was saying about being a negative or positive person? Well, that's being positive. Positive think, yeah, because if I could win that and what I could do with that money, and I don't look at winning the lottery as being a selfish thing, like saying, yeah, I, I have all this money, now I can have everything I've ever wanted. I think about what I could do with the money to help other people, like my family, um, you know, friends, neighbors, things like that, to have that kind of money. And that's optimistic. I think it's and so that just leaves me with a very empty feeling when I don't win so I don't buy a lottery ticket okay I avoid that problem um, the other thing is I have never been the kind of person that can handle compliments well either giving them or receiving them because in this day and age and in, in the profession I was in the teaching profession there's a lot of rah 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 in the teaching profession. Going around telling people, you're doing a great job, that's super. You go up to the kids, I love what you've done there. Always being positive. You're never supposed to be negative with a kid in a classroom. So even though they may be doing something incorrectly or something needs improvement, you, you never voice it in a negative way because we don't want to hurt their self-esteem. Well, you know, I had my self-esteem hurt a lot in my life, so maybe that's where I'm coming from when I'm being negative about things. But I don't believe in false compliments. If there's something somebody has done or created or whatever that I genuinely believe is astounding, I will say so. But I am not the kind of person, and this may be people might consider me hard-hearted, I don't know, I'm not the kind of person that will just walk up to anybody and go, you're looking fabulous today. Oh, I love what you've done with your hair. Oh, that outfit just complements your figure so well. No, I will say it if I mean it. If I don't say it, then I don't mean it. I'm not gonna give false compliments. And having said that, I have had people many times who have come up to me and said things like that. And maybe I'm cynical, but immediately I think, do you really mean it? Or you just do what, or do you want something? And that might be my cynical mind kicking in at that point, my pessimism. If someone's going to compliment me, they must want something from me. Now, why do I say that? Because that has happened too many times to count in my life. And I've been sucked in by that. Now, it's very hard. It's a fine line, basically, to, you know, not look at everything positive that comes your way as having a hidden negative agenda behind it. It is. I guess that's what makes someone a cynic when they think that all the time. I do not think that all the time. But after the fact, I'll often wonder, was that sincere, that compliment or that gift or whatever, or is the hammer going to come down? Do they want something else from me? But I try not to look at that. And yes, I have been burned, haven't we all? And I don't know what the expression is, but you know, once, once burned, twice something. There's an expression, right? So for me to t take this time, this pissed off rant that I usually give, and turn around and go, well, I'm thankful for this, and I'm blessed with this, and that would seem false, I think, to a lot of people. 
because that isn't me. Am I thankful for things? Yes, I am. I have a good life, okay? Um, I, I have a house that's paid for. I have a husband that our relationship is better today than it was 37 years ago when I met him. Um, my mother's being looked after. My siblings and their families are all in good health and well. I don't owe anybody anything in terms of finances. I have plenty to eat. I have clothes to wear. Yes, I have a good life and I'm thankful for that. I do not have any major diseases. Yeah, I have a lot of things I'm thankful for. But I don't feel that I need to sing about it. I mean, that would almost seem the other extreme, wouldn't it? That you're boasting. And I see so many YouTube channels where people do exactly that. And in my mind, again, maybe I'm just being cynical, but in my mind, those people are saying all of these things and it's false. It's false. Do they really feel that way? Um, I'll give you one other example. And I don't know if this is true or not. There is a YouTuber who I used to watch all the time. He came on every week and he talked about all the things he had just bought from Amazon or wherever. He talked about what he was decorating now in his house. He had a beautiful home. Uh, everything was designer quality in terms of the way it was laid out and decorated and the color scheme and the whole bit. He talked about how he keeps his day organized and how great this is and his uh, journals and his uh, planners that he uses, um, the food he's cooking, his, his exercise routine and all this stuff. And it, he painted a picture of the perfect life. And suddenly he's dropped out of sight. He hasn't done a YouTube video in over six weeks, almost two months now. And it makes me wonder, what happened? Did something happen in his world that's put him over the edge? Is his health bad suddenly? Did his finances uh, suddenly get ahead of him? Um, does he owe everybody? Spend a lot of money on stuff. Um, is his relationship going down the tubes? What's wrong? I want to know. Um, but there's been no sign of any of, of, of him, of what it's like. It's like he doesn't exist. So I don't, maybe he just got tired of making YouTube videos. That's a possibility. Maybe he couldn't take the criticism that comes. Yes, I've said this before. If you're a content maker on YouTube, you are opening yourself up to criticism. And if you can't take the criticism, you may not want to do a YouTube channel or at least turn off the comment feature. And I know some YouTube uh, YouTubers out there who have done that. They've turned off the comment feature. Uh, they don't want to hear anything from anybody. I mean, if I get a really negative comment, one that I think is not justified and they're just being they're just being belligerent they're not being constructively critical then I block it no one sees it except me it's gone bye bye I do that because it creates a tone and it's not the tone I want on my my YouTube channel but I still leave the comments there um but my whole point is I want to be me I want to be the genuine me this is me. Thank you for the suggestion about, you know, even alternating to what I'm thankful for. I'm not going to do that. I'm not. Thank you for the suggestion. I get the point. But I'm not going to do that because it isn't me. So there you have it. If I say something, everything I say on my YouTube channel, everything is me. It's the truth. I'm not saying it to make friends and influence enemies. I'm not saying it to get sympathy or pats on the back. I'm not saying any of this stuff to earn money because you know I do not have a paid part of my YouTube channel like many people do. It's just me. 
just ranting away. And if it bothers you, if you think I'm being too negative, then there is a solution. I'll tell you now you can't change me. I am who I am. But you can change your habits. And your habit would be, don't tune in. I'm sorry to see you go, but if it's bothering you that much, then, you know, really, move on. Don't let it get to you, okay? Just turn me off. It, as Walter will criticize me for this, but it's as simple as that, okay? All right, so that's enough of what's pissing me off this week. So let's move on to the product review. I got a new toy. Cricut has come out with the foil transfer kit. And that's what it is. It is another tool that snaps into your Cricut and I think it'll work on any Cricut machine. I don't think it's exclusive to Maker. I was talking about this yesterday with my art journal group and someone asked if it would work on, you know, the other Cricuts, not just the Maker. And there's nothing on this box that says it's only exclusively for the Maker. And I don't remember on the Cricut website reading anything that said it was exclusive to the Cricut Maker. So I think it'll work in any Cricut. I probably should try it in my other Cricut. I have a Cricut, um, Explore Air, so I never use it. Um, I should sell it. I don't know. I don't sell it because Walter gave it to me as a birthday present one year, and I feel guilty if I sell it, you know, but I always use the maker. Anyways, um, so this I think will work on any Cricut. What does it do? Well, you use foil transfer paper, which they sell, but I think, I haven't done the experiment yet with this. Um, but I am going to experiment. I have a, a wide selection of different foils. Why, I don't know, because I never use them. And uh, it's the same I can say about this thing. I probably will only use this a couple of times as well, but I got it, because it's a new toy. Um, so you can buy this transfer foil. It comes with uh, a sample package, but I also bought a package, and this has 24 sheets, and that's the size of the sheets. You see a green one in here, and they come in like green, gold, silver, and red. I think it's just four colors. This is called the Jewel Sampler. They have other samplers that have different shades of foil in them. So there's 24 sheets in here. It was not expensive, actually, even given the fact that it was in American prices. I think a package of this was $7.99 US. And this, I think, is $49.99 US. Now, between the two um, and the shipping and the exchange rate, this cost me about $92 Canadian. Okay, so for us in Canada, this isn't cheap. Can you buy it at Michael's? Um, I don't know if it's available yet, but it probably is. Somebody asked yesterday, well, can you use your coupon? I, no, you can't. You can't use the Michael's coupons, and somebody told me yesterday, too, you can't use the Joanne coupons. Uh, on anything that's cricket and I knew that at least with Michaels um, because one time I complained about that I went uh, asked the manager of the store he says why is it I can't use the, your coupons on cricket products and they said that's not really us that's the policy of Provocraft that makes cricket and they just say they don't take any coupons whatsoever so you know there you go um, and I imagine these will be the same price but in Canadian dollars at Michael's. Okay, so what this comes with is you get the big tip as it shows here and then you get three smaller little tips. One's a fine tip, they have that in here right now, a medium tip and a wide tip. Temp, tip, which presses down, it's like a stylus, it presses down, you, you load up your design and uh, they recommend using a line drawing kind of design and it traces it out as if it was going to cut it but instead it puts pressure on the foil from this and it transfers to your card so I did a really quick little one and you probably can't see it very well I did it in gold just on a white card base um, and I used the fine tip and it traced that all out and it does a really good job and that foil is not going anywhere so yeah it works very effectively and if you're the kind of person that loves card making especially and you love the foil effect then this is something you might want to invest in if you have a Cricut. Now somebody asked me could you can you trace something over top of this using a stylus? Yes you can because it just works off of pressure. That's all there is to it and I know that because I don't know if you'll be able to see it but right up here in the corner 
see the shiny part there? That was my finger. When I was trying to get the foil sheet off, I inadvertently pressed my fingernail into that and it left foil behind. So yes, you could, if you had something and a stylus, you know, a little stylus with a little ball on the end of it, you could just put your picture on top of your uh, foil and trace out your picture and yes, it would still work. Then somebody asked me, and I haven't tried this yet, whether or not you could put this in an embossing folder. My answer to that is, I'll bet you can. I haven't tried it yet, but I am going to try it and I'll let you know. But I think you can because it all works off of pressure. I also know you can get foil, and I'm sure I have some in my stash that will work the same as this foil. Okay, um, so there is some experimentation here that you can do. But if you have a Cricut, it might be worth the investment. Now, yes, a few years ago, uh, We Are Memory Keepers came out with uh, their foil quill, they called it. And it works pretty well. I have one of those. I've used it about twice. Um, you have to plug it into a USB source. Now, on the side of the Cricut Maker, there is a, UBS, a USB port. Um, that's because it has to heat up. And then it drops into your pen holder, and away you go. Well, what I like about this better is... I just drop the tool in in seconds and away we go just as if I was going to cut something. I don't have to plug in another device and let it heat up. However, the advantage of the heat up one is it means that you can use what's called heat transfer foil and that's fairly readily available uh, as well. So, you know, if you have one of those and you get one of these like I do, <laughs> you've got all your bases covered. If you're a big foiler person, I'm trying to think of a way I could incorporate this into my quilting, but no, no. I don't know if you could transfer it onto a sheet of fabric, how that would work and how that would stand up. Hmm, another experiment. I love to experiment. Okay, so that's all that I bought new this week. And so that takes us to book of the week. Yes, I told you last week that I thought there a couple of weeks ago I had gone through my whole stash of books and I discovered another shelf <laughs> with a few books in it. So here's one of those ones I discovered. It's called The Collage Workbook, How to Get Started and Stay Inspired. And so if you're into mixed media, of course, this will be right up your alley. Uh, collage work is a lot of fun to do. Um, it's a great way to recycle your old magazines too or old books and things like that. But this particular one looks at different ways and techniques you can use for collaging. It talks about uh, basic materials that you might want to look into and use. And then it gives you lots of examples. And there are write-ups in detail about these examples and what the artist has done. Um, so again, this book is a, a how-to book, but it's also a book of inspiration. Now you might think you know everything there is about collage because what is collage? Cutting up little pictures, putting them down randomly on another piece of paper and gluing it all down, you've got a collage. Well, actually it is, but there is more to it. And this book will explain those more twos as well. So you can get this book on amazon.ca and it's $20.74 uh, if, it, uh, if you have Prime. With Prime, it's free shipping. If you don't have Prime, then I'm not sure what the shipping might be for it. Um, when I bought it, I paid, well, actually, I paid about the same price. According to the back of this book, I paid $19.95 Canadian for it. So really, the price difference is less than a buck. Um, so a good book, the Collage Workbook, and it's by Randall Plowman. So I have the link for that to Amazon in the show notes. Okay, so what's that take us to now? Ah, okay, the second part in my uh, new project, the Curio Cabinet uh, album bookcase, or whatever you want to call it. So here's part two. Okay, so I've got these stained, and I think that's as deep as I want to go. There's a little bit of green showing through, which is fine, but I think it's still kind of blah. So I'm going to take a Tim Holtz stencil. This one's called Flames, and basically, using some stays on ink, I'm just going to do relatively lightly a little design on this and 
hope this doesn't look too bad. I want to have a little bit of pattern on it. Okay, so that's looking not too bad at all. I'm not doing the entire stencil, I'm just doing it in bits and pieces. Yeah, I'm kind of liking that. That's making this a little bit more interesting. I think I did it a little too light on this one, so just add a little bit more. Now, whatever I do on these two pieces, this is sort of the experiment, I'm going to do on the bigger piece as well. Start it, you can't stop. Okay, I think I need a little bit more over here. Okay, I think I'll stop while I am ahead on this. Just hit it a little bit with the heat. I don't know if I need heat really. It stays on ink and it goes on anything and does stay on. But we'll do this anyways. Okay, so those two pieces aren't looking too bad yet. I think though what I need to do is go around the edges with some ink. Maybe just the stays on and the edges I've kind of let them um, just go, uh, you know, let it run down. But I think I'll go over those with some ink as well. So I'll be back and show you what that looks like. Okay, so now I finished my stenciling and I added a little piece of wood. Actually, it's a popsicle stick across the seams where the two boxes were joined. And on top of, I, well, first of all, I took some distress uh, ground espresso and colorized the little pieces of popsicle stick and then I found this washi tape in my stash that I thought would sort of make a nice little pattern across here so that's what I've done and I have sprayed this with two coats of a clear sealer that dries fairly quickly in order to protect the inks that are on here because the Tim Holtz Distress inks of course are water reactive so if any water gets on this they will start to bleed together so this will prevent that from happening and it just gives it a nice little bit of a shine with not too much of a shine but as you can see the lights reflecting off it a little bit here too so I think this is what I'm going to do with the uh, big box the one that these will be attached to and then I have to attempt something on the inside of these now I want to line let's get a little piece of dirt out of there I want to line each one of these with a piece of decorative um, scrapbook paper but before I do that I think I'm going to spray these with some of the distress inks just to get rid of the white uh, look on it so the outside of the doors and the outside and back of the box are all done and they're both sitting here with two coats of clear coat uh, acrylic spray uh, to seal them and they're still a little tacky so I'm going to let them sit for an hour or two and thoroughly dry before I work on the interior and in the interior I think I'm going to do a little experiment. Um, I want to make this look worn so I think I will spray it with some distress inks again, blot it up and turn them upside down and let the excess sort of run out of them. So my theory is I'll get sort of a streaking effect in there. As I said, I'm going to line each one of these little compartments with a little piece of scrapbooking 
paper. So I'm not that concerned about how evenly the stain goes on. But I can't do that right now because these, as I said, are still a little tacky. And so I've got to let them dry. And just one point, I had that sitting on top of the box, but it wasn't enough support. It was just bending off. So I have fastened it to the back of the box and it'll give me the effect that there's something else there on top. And who knows, I might actually take a few little things and mount them up on the top like a little ledge because curio, curio get the word right, curio cabinets, oftentimes you would see things on top of them as well. So we'll come back to this when this is thoroughly dry. And that takes us to events in the past week and uh, just about my mother. Um, she's fine, settled into her new room and whatnot and you know that uh, there is the possibility that come December she may get moved into the brand new facility. Um, actually I don't think it will be in December if she does get a chance to move into it. It's not probably going to be until the new year and I say that because we went around by it on the weekend. We took a little drive over to where the new place is going up and yeah they have the walls up on the outside and they're starting to put in the windows and things like that but the interior doesn't look like much has been done on the interior of course yet and this is mm, first part of October. I don't know it could be done by then for moving in but I don't think so and the other reason is that the staff the administrator of my mother's nursing home basically told us she didn't think it would be ready for December either now speaking of the administrator we had a zoom meeting uh, this week with uh, she the administrator sent out a link and said anybody that was interested um, you know to tune in and so I did there weren't many of us I'd say there's maybe 12 people uh, with that and they basically talked about the uh, new facility. I gave us a little bit of a rundown on that and that's where I learned that in her professional opinion, the administrators, that it's, it's more like the new year when the time they'll be able to move people in. Um, but the other thing she wanted to talk to us about was uh, this whole thing about taking your loved one out of the nursing home for a short stay visit. Um, see what's coming up is this coming weekend is Thanksgiving here in Canada. Ours always comes earlier than the American one. And you know, given the situation right now, uh, the, our governments are telling us, you know, really avoid the family gatherings this year um, and all that stuff. And we talked about that yesterday in Stephen and Walter Live and about the bubble idea and all that kind of thing. And so I'm not going to go into that in detail. but. From the nursing home's point of view, they're strongly recommending, strongly recommending that you don't take your family member out of the nursing home for Thanksgiving. And rightly so. There's too much of a threat of them uh, coming in contact with somebody that may be asymptomatic or whatever with COVID and they come back into the nursing home and they spread it. And it's a death sentence for those people in there, quite frankly. So. All of us that were on that family, on that Zoom meeting, agreed with her. But that was the problem. You know, she was preaching to the choir. Um, and that's always the way. You know, the people she really needed to be talking to are the people who are not taking this situation seriously enough or think that they, they can take their loved one out with no consequences. But of course, isn't that always the way? The people you really need to, to talk to are not the ones that show up to one of these meetings. I mean, I know what it was like when I was a teacher. Parent teacher night. I saw all the parents for all the great kids. I didn't see the parents for the kids that were struggling, that were a problem, things like that. They never showed up, which tells you probably why the child was having trouble uh, in the first place. But you always saw the good parents, and that's exactly what happened with this meeting. She saw all the good relatives kind of a thing. But I appreciate them doing that. It was it was a good idea. I think she should do a few more of those. I know she's really busy, so you know, finding a time is not easy. But um, it was good. Uh, so everything is fine at the nursing home right now, and I hope it stays that way. Okay, so let's turn our attention to chicken tacos.
Let's talk chicken tacos. Why talk chicken tacos? Because Walter made chicken tacos on Friday night. Now, we had gone a week ago uh, to Aurelia, a place north of us. I told you about that. And we had lunch out on a patio. And we both ordered the chicken nachos. And they were a soft, uh, not nacho, taco. They were a soft taco, you know, soft shell, not the crunchy one. And uh, the ones I ordered were delicious. They was chicken, some kind of seasoned chicken with bacon and... Um, guacamole and I don't know some other things in it and that and it was I'm not sure what the sauce was I want to say it was sort of a ranch but I'm not sure if it was but they're really good and I said to Walter we should make these ourselves we often will make tacos on a Friday night uh, the standard ones with the ground beef and all that kind of stuff which I love but um, I thought let's shake it up a little bit let's try our hand at chicken tacos and Walter actually went on to Amazon and he ordered little taco trays they're just little pieces of plastic that have grooves in them that you can put your taco shell in so they don't fall over which we usually buy the stand and stuff ones you know the ones that have the flat bottom uh, but these are for well you could use these with those two or the regular tacos but we got them because we were going to use the soft tacos for this and they work like a dream uh, so that was a good investment they're not that expensive um, so Walter did up some chicken and he did up some bacon and they're more like a club sandwich almost in, in the way they taste but they were very very tasty so I'm going to get you hungry now and I'm going to show you right now what those look like right. now tonight for dinner Walter made chicken tacos or we'll, we're going to call them club tacos because they have chicken and bacon and we have some tomato and some guac and some cheese and some, I said tomatoes, didn't I? Yes. Yeah. And uh, tzatziki and a little hot sauce. And this is based on something we had at a restaurant last week when we went up to Aurelia, as I said, in uh, last week's vlog. And we thought we'd try to recreate those for here. So Walter went online and he ordered these little tricky taco holder things. And uh, so we're having restaurant style chicken club tacos. And we're just going to try one and see what the verdict is. How is it? Oh, it's good. He'd say that anyways because he made them. But yeah, something a little different. So yeah, you want something a little different? Give it a try. It's not hard to do. Um, okay, so I already mentioned we had uh, an art journal group Zoom meeting. Uh, we have one of those twice each month. Uh, it's a group of ladies that I've been working with for years now. Uh, you know that. And uh, I always post the recorded version of it onto my YouTube channel. It's there now. Um, and I have a link in the show notes uh, for it as well, I believe. Yes, I do. Um, and feel free to watch it or watch parts of it because we're sharing ideas, things that we're making, products we've seen. Actually, we had a bit of a, one person was talking about, um, she'd had this new stamp set and it was really sticky and it was sticking to her paper and pulling it up and tearing it and things like that. And we were all trying to come up with ideas as to how she can get around that problem. Um, and actually already have had a couple of people comment on that as well with, with what could be done. But this is where we talk informally about what we're working on and products and things. And you know, you might gleam something of interest out of that. And if you are interested in joining our group, we are not a closed group. Uh, yes, we all know each other very well. We're a very small group. But if you'd like to expand our numbers, you're more than welcome to do so. Just send me an email and I will send you the link for the next one. Now, the next one's going to be October the 18th. They're always on a Sunday afternoon, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, everybody in the group is more than happy to welcome you. They're a very friendly group of people. Um, and we try to stay away from politics and everything else. We're just talking about what we've been working on. So it's a happy little group. So if you want to join a happy little group, let me know. Okay. Um, 
What's that take me to? Oh, okay. Well, here are some bad news, but news that's not unexpected. Remember I talked about the river cruise and trying to get our money back from all of that because of COVID. And we got half of it back from them. And we were putting the other half, which was about $10,000, through the insurance that we had paid $900 to get for that. And that they had rejected us once, but they gave us a one-line rejection. We didn't accept that answer. And so we wrote them a very detailed letter about why we they should be giving us a refund on the other half of the cruise money. Well, we finally got a reply from them. No, not a surprise, but it's dead now in the water. Uh, we're not going to get it because according to them, in the fine print, the River Cruise Company offered us a um, cru future cruise credit. And they said because they offered us an alternative date, which I have an argument with that, we were not given a date it was for some time down the road and they even had an expiration on it as well. Now, as Walter said, if we'd had taken that and it expired or whatever because of circumstances, then uh, apparently we could get that money back from that. But we weren't taking the chances of something like that because, you know, these companies, they would just delay it, delay it, delay it, delay it. And who knows, maybe eventually they'd go out of business and we'd be you know, get nothing at all. So we did get half of our money back. Yes, this was a $20,000 cruise, so we got $10,000 back. So that's better than a kick in the head, right? But no surprise, the insurance company's going, nope, you're not getting anything. And basically, we've exhausted our resources. I mean, yeah, they've got us. So there you go. Yes, it upsets me from the point of view that uh, this company gave us nothing in return and we basically are shoring them up financially with our ten thousand dollars and we're probably not the only ones i'm sure um you know yes i get it no one expected covid i mean if covid hadn't happened we would have gone on the cruise um but it did and we're screwed luckily it wasn't our life savings or anything like that. Uh, in 10 years time, it won't really matter. <laughs> you know, we're absorbing the loss. Um, but, you know, again, that's why I don't, as I said earlier, that's why I don't ever look at the end result of things in a happy way. I expect the worst. If I get something less than the worst, then I'm not disappointed, I'm happy. If the worst happens, I've prepared myself for it. And I did prepare myself for this, that I kind of figured we were not going to win this battle. But we tried. So what more can I say? We tried. Okay, so we'll just put that in the past and move on. Okay, um, so time to finish up here. But just a reminder that this month's Craft and Chat, the link's in the show notes, I hope you can join us if it's at a good time for you. It's 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Wednesday. So, and that's Wednesday, in case you're seeing this sometime after the fact, I am talking about Wednesday, October the, what's today? October the 5th? It's October the 7th. Yeah. Okay. So I hope you have a good week. I hope you have a creative week. I hope you stay healthy. If you are a Canadian, uh, happy Thanksgiving. And we'll see you next week. And Stephen and Walter Live will be live this coming Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, even though it's Thanksgiving weekend. But heck, where are we going? Nowhere. So we'll see you then. Bye-bye.